Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison was interviewed on Al Sharpton's MSNBC show on Sunday, and it, it may come as shocking news that Al Sharpton still has an MSNBC show, or that he ever had one. He is, after all, the least talented broadcaster in the history of American broadcasting. He makes Don Lemon look like a broadcasting legend by comparison, yet he has had a show on the network for years, DEI in action yet again. In any case, um, there's one portion of this Keith Ellison interview that has uh, gotten some attention today. Let's watch it. Well, I am a prosecutor, as you know, and if you are a victim of a crime, then the crime rate is intolerable. And I understand that we have a duty and an obligation to protect everyone and make sure justice is done. But statistically, it is true that crime is, crime is dramatically down and the some of the right wing prescriptions for how to deal with crime are just wrong and are going to bring us back to the bad old days. Okay, let's pause it there for a moment. We haven't even gotten to the really crazy part yet, but let's deal with this first claim uh, first, which is Ellison saying that the crime crime rate is actually down and that Republican prescriptions to deal with crime are just wrong and will bring us back to the bad old days. And by bad old days, he means the days when we put, you know, when we did radical things like put criminals in jail. Uh, he doesn't want to see that happen again. But what about this idea that crime is down? Well, Ellison is not the only one saying this. It's a major Democrat talking point, which means by extension that it is a major media talking point. No surprise there. It's an election year, and they want to desperately convince voters that things are going swimmingly well. Yet, even as Ellison and Democrat Party and the media assure us that crime rates are dropping, many Americans look around their communities and they see something that does not comport with the rosy picture that these propagandists are painting. They tell us that crime is going down, crime's under control, but we can see with our own eyes the rampant shoplifting, drug use, property crime, violent assaults, zombified drug addicts wandering around in the street and so on. And they tell us uh, that, that, that crime is going down, but we can see that companies like Walgreens that can survive anywhere, that could probably find a way to survive in Antarctica or on the moon, yet are being driven out of major cities because of crime. So how do we explain that? Well, the short answer is that Keith Ellison and company are a bunch of low down, no good, dirty, filthy liars. The longer answer is that yes, According to the statistics, many types of crime are trending down, but that's only happening on paper, not out in reality. It's happening in the books, but the books have been cooked. Uh, it's not hard to see how this has been done. Many cities have simply stopped prosecuting many sorts of crimes, especially property crimes. That's how they perform this magic trick. You know, if you don't prosecute crime, then there will be less crime, at least on paper. It's kind of like how you might manufacture a dramatic dip in heart disease in a given year by simply refusing to diagnose many cases of heart disease. If heart disease isn't being diagnosed as much this year as it was last year, even if there's actually more of it this year than last year, then just like that, heart disease has gone down statistically, like magic. Keeping windshields clean is always a pain, especially with all the rain we've been getting here in Nashville. That's why I am so grateful to have Windshield Wow. Windshield Wow is an innovative windshield cleaning device that uses two magnetic cleaning paddles, one on the outside and one on the inside of your car, to clean both sides of your windshield, all from the outside. Being able to clean both the front and the inside window and the at the same time is a game changer. I wish I had one of these years ago. Windshield Wow applies firm cleaning pressure and is super thin to get into those tight dashboard areas. Seriously, all you got to do is push around the outside paddle and the inside falls automatically, leaving your windshield squeaky clean. Washing your car windshield enhances visibility and driving safety and helps preserve the integrity of your vehicle's glass and paintwork. It's a simple yet essential aspect of car maintenance that shouldn't be overlooked. What are you waiting for? Go to windshieldwow.com, use code Walsh to check out for a special discount. It's windshieldwow.com, code Walsh. Now, Supposedly, they, they do still prosecute violent crime, and yet there has been a supposed uh, drop in those sorts of crimes as well. And that may be true, uh, but keep in mind that 2020 was the worst year for violent crime in decades. If there's been a drop, it's dropping from those highs. That doesn't mean that the violent crime rate is low or that it isn't still a major problem. Also, the fact is that many of these woke Soros DAs are not exactly zealous about prosecuting violent crime either. So even those statistics probably aren't reliable. And these are all uh, things to remember as you listen to propagandists like Keith Ellison. And now that we've done that, we've gotten that out of the way, let's get to the really crazy part, um, or the crazier part. Anyway, here it is. My thought is that we need to continue to uh, be aggressive about you know, protecting people, no doubt, prosecuting crime, murder happens, rape happens, 
criminal sexual assault and human trafficking. These things happen. We will continue to do our job, but we've also got to go upstream. We've got to make sure that the automobiles are not so easy to steal so that they're a tempting, attractive nuisance for young people. And, you know, right now we are investigating two major automakers because their cars are dramatically too easy to steal for young people. Dramatically too easy to steal. Uh, and I'm not one to unironically accuse anybody of victim blaming, but a victim blaming is anything is what you just heard there. That was the car theft version of you shouldn't have worn that short skirt if you didn't want that to happen. Like it's exactly the same kind of logic. Now, if you didn't know any better, when you heard him say we need to go upstream, you may have expected him to talk about things that are actually upstream of the crime problem. Things like the collapse of the family, fatherless homes, unwed pregnancy, divorce. He's right. Uh, you know, we do need to go upstream. Uh, that's what you that's what you find upstream if you go upstream. Instead, he didn't go upstream, though. Instead, he actually went downstream, way downstream, and then veered off into some small, irrelevant tributary. He claims that cars are getting stolen because they're too easy to steal, which creates a temptation for young people. And uh, here are a few problems with that. First of all, blaming the car manufacturers for the fact that people are stealing the cars is like if you got mugged on the street corner and then you turned around and sued the company that manufactured your wallet. It's, it's totally outlandish. Second, car theft might be a crime of opportunity, but it's not one that someone is tempted into in the moment most times. Like You aren't going to have some otherwise good kid, some straight-A student who works part-time job at Chick-fil-A, some well-behaved, well-raised young man who you know, happens to see a very stealable car parked along the street as he's walking by, and then, and then feels overcome with the urge to abscond with it. I myself wasn't even a straight-A student or particularly well-behaved, but uh, I never felt the temptation to steal a car. It's not like when you're trying to follow a strict diet and then somebody brings cupcakes into work. That's the sort of thing that you could be tempted into. But if you're stealing a car, it's because either you were out looking for cars to steal or you're the kind of person who will steal a car if the opportunity arises. Either way, no young person is falling into a life of crime simply because certain cars are so easy to steal that the temptation is just too great. By the way, most low-level crimes are easy to commit. Anybody can steal a car. Anybody can shoplift. Anybody can burglarize a home. Now, getting away with it may take some skill, except in a lot of cities where they won't prosecute you. But you know, aside from that, getting away with it may take some skill. But Crimes of that sort are easy to commit, at least. Um, and there's no way to make it really difficult. This is not like kidnapping the president or something. Although that might be a bad example. You could probably just leave a trail of hard candies and he would follow it right into your van. Not that I'm advocating that. The point is, cars are relatively easy to steal no matter what you do. And that's why you don't solve the problem by addressing the how. Now, it's a good idea on an individual basis to make it harder, by comparison, for a criminal to steal your car. That way he'll go steal somebody else's instead, and it's not your problem. But on a societal level, the solution isn't found in the how, it's found in the why. Why are kids out stealing cars? Why are they tempted by the seductive sight of a car with insufficient theft prevention? Well, that takes us back upstream, back to what's really important. Uh, family, marriage, parenting, all of the things that Keith Ellison doesn't want to talk about. Because he's too stupid to understand any of these issues, and also because he's too corrupt and too dishonest to discuss them, even if he did understand them. And that is why he is today canceled. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Walsh Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.